Good morning, Paul, fellow classmates, and peers. My name is Natalie, and these are my colleagues, Shantoshi, Julia, Asura, Ryan. And we are here today as marketing consultants on behalf of Abercrombie and Fitch to discuss why retail advertisements should use more realistic body images. The itinerary for today is as follows. Santoshi and Julia will discuss the relevance of man and woman affected by how ANF use the sexualization of the human body as a purpose to maintain and attract sales. When one thinks of ANF, they associate it with an extremely fit, topless male or perhaps an unhealthy, skinny female. This causes the image that everyone must look like those two models described, and people with excess body fat feel that achieving that body figure is unattainable. Ryan will then continue on with recommendations on how Abercrombie and Fitch can be more inclusive to an average consumer, followed by Saran, who will be discussing challenges that A and M may endure, as well as their conclusions. It's becoming more common among companies to adopt the expectation and the use of sexuality as a marketing tool. Abercrombie's advertisements are known to use shirtless male models and remove the head from the male model to focus on the body in the advertisement, which is a form of expectation. The company uses sexual appeals as a way to promote their products. A concern that arises is that the idolized images of male body figures creates a sense of discouragement for the male consumers who feel like they do not fit or look like the male model in the advertisement. So as a result, they may dissociate, disassociate themselves from the brand as they believe they do not identify with the brand due to their body size and appearance. So their loss of interest in the company is due to the belief that they're not capable of attaining the body figure of the male model that's portrayed in the advertisement. So Abercrombie and Finch exploits the male body figures in their advertisement, which causes consumers to develop a perception that only males who have good body figures will look attractive in their clothing, which creates a sense of inferiority. So this causes consumers to draw their attention away from Abercrombie and & Fitch and towards another company that aligns more with their attributes. So Abercrombie & Fitch, they also tend to manipulate or Photoshop the body figures of models in order to enhance the model's appearance, which, makes, which creates the image to be more unrealistic. So in response to this concern, according to the research study by Ilya, Abercrombie should develop an admiration of realistic male bodies. So by using realistic male bodies, they feel like they're more capable of aspiring to that realistic male body. <clears throat> when the male body appears to be normal and realistic, it also allows the male consumers to develop a sense of connection and likability toward the advertisement. As a male body, as a male model is perceived as fitting the qualities of an average guy. Realistic male bodies could be any body type or one that's attainable. So according to the research study by Elliot, it would be more effective using an average guy in advertising as it could relate more to him and were more likely to aspire to an attainable goal. Abercrombie should, should use real, realistic, Abercrombie should idolize the realistic male bodies in their advertisements as it allows consumers to think more about the brand being right for them as they are rather than what they wish they could be, which is what Elliot stated in his research, research study. So it's evident that by using normal body figures in advertisements, consumers are able to develop a stronger, a stronger sense of connection toward the product being advertised. Now, now Julia will be focusing on the feminine side of body images in advertisements. In Muslim countries such as our very own, we like to idolize body shapes because it is linked to attractiveness and source credibility of the endorser. In my recent article, it states fat women are generally classified as physically unattractive and overweight and are perceived to be less intelligent, less popular, and less outgoing than those who are slimmer. Marketers believe that if Amber display unattractive models, companies can achieve their goal of convincing young female consumers that if they buy their goods, they will just be like the, the endorsers in the advertisement, skinny, beautiful, and attractive. It is said that within models, they evoke a more positive attitude towards the brand, so it is reasonable to conclude that thin models will stimulate a higher degree of purchase intent. Additionally, according to my article, it is expected that exposure to advertising using Western models would cause great body dissatisfaction among women. 
In a 12-country study, it was found that more westernized countries had thinner female stereotypes and thus, and thus reported a greater, a greater level of body dissatisfaction because young women, young female consumers witnessing these ads do not look like those in the ads. Although Amber Comey are doing a fantastic job on this marketing plan, we believe that there are ways of improving its marketing plan. And now Ron will be talking about the company's recommendations. Based on this research, the first recommendation would be to change the intro code. It would be more effective using an average guy in advertising as consumers could relate more to him and more likely to aspire to an attainable goal. Utilizing these images of men that are not ideal but are more relatable to the common consumer could help consumers feel less intimidated when entering the store. This also applies to the female brand of Abercrombie. These less intimidating, more average positions will help Abercrombie and Fitch's sales and brand images because the consumers will shop at the store and not feel concerned that they will not measure up to or look good enough or be pretty enough to wear the clothes that Abercrombie and Fitch is selling. If Abercrombie and Fitch changes their brand position to a more natural body image, they will not be intimidated to these self esteem issues and will be able to attract more consumers from other stores that may still be trying to target this ideal body image. Secondly, Abercrombie and Fitch should create new advertisements to change the company's schema. Currently, when one thinks of Abercrombie, they think of upscale, generally good looking people. However, if they change their schema, it would allow Abercrombie to change would allow Abercrombie to be viewed as more of a clothing store whose products make everyone look good and not just that ideal image. Doing so will help attract consumers that have not considered Abercrombie and Fitch excuse me, as an appropriate or welcoming line of products that they shop. Helping consumers leaving the store feeling more satisfied and confident in their positioning will not only keep consumers in their stores but also increase their bottom line. I will now be passing it on to Senator to talk about obstacles and challenges with these new recommendations. Today I'm going to be talking about the obstacles and challenges that Abercrombie will face when it's trying to incorporate more of a normal body figure and shift from the ideal body figure that everyone should be at. Um, Abercrombie already has a preset consumer base in its advertisement model. Um, changing it might result in some consumers feeling like they're betrayed. Currently, the consumers that did purchase Abercrombie products or Hollister, which is their sub-brand products, believe that they were advertised and sold the product because when they feel like they wear that t-shirt, they too look like that model in that image that they are selling. Um, when people purchase these products and Aber Abercrombie decides that they're going to change their advertising model to more of a decent, normal body figure, people might feel like, I purchased this t-shirt or this uh, dress shirt or this dress thinking that I will look more like the more fitter model. And now it's being the same product is being sold to me again, but as a regular person. And the reason they made that move to pay that extra premium, moving on to our second point, is because they wanted to feel a certain way. They wanted that body stature that Abercrombie sells in its advertisements. And any changes to their, their advertisement might affect not only their current consumer base, but maybe future consumer bases that want to have that ideal body figure or do have that ideal body figure and feel like, when I wear Hollister or Abercrombie, my true body figure is shown to the world. Um, that would move us on to our last and final point. In today's day and age, we know media plays a very big role, and nowadays the social roles of people are changing. The way people look at others is also changing. We are all equal as human beings, and our media is trying to portray that in a more liberal manner. Um, when Abercrombie changes their advertisements from a very ideal figure to an actual human-like figure, that is normal and attainable goal for all their um, customers. The media might portray it as a petty chain just in order to keep up with today's market and to agree with today's consumers. And it might just be thought as it's Abercrombie pulling the fast move. So in order to fix that, we have to make sure that we cater to the media, we cater to the people in such a way that it's a step-by-step -step process, that we slowly make the change but it doesn't seem like we're making a petty change in order for the media or the consumer to feel that we're just doing this in order for our motive is just money. In fact, we do actually care. Um, in conclusion, these are obstacles that we will face. Um, Ryan did talk about recommendations. These obstacles, if they're looked at, analyzed, and worked on, and we take this in a step-by-step -step process, we as a team do feel that 
we can incorporate this change into Abercrombie and make it more of a fit brand for today's day and age, for today's consumer and the generations coming ahead. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Hope you had a